All right, welcome to lecture 27, part A. So uh, in lecture 27, and actually in lecture 28 too, we're gonna talk about solutions. So the first thing we're gonna learn about in this part is just what the heck is a solution? So that's mostly gonna be some terms, some terminology about solutions. Um, and the next couple parts, part B and C, we're gonna do a little math with solutions, specifically talking about how you can make up a solution and once you make up a solution, what's its concentration? So uh, we'll get to that in the next two parts. But for right now, let's just talk about what the heck is a solution. Let's get started. All right, so what's a solution? Well, let's start off with a little vocabulary. So first off, a solution is just a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. So a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. So let's make sure that definition makes sense. So homogeneous. Homogeneous, oh, we used that word previously in the semester. You might remember it just means that it's consistent all the way through. So there aren't layers or regions. It's everything's mixed together. And then it's gotta be at least two things mixed together, two things. Now, as far as those two things go, one of them is going to be the solvent. So the solvent is the component of the mixture present in greater amount. The component of the mixture present in greater amount, that's the solvent. And then the solute is the component of the mixture present in lesser amount. All right. So let's do a little example. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make up a little solution real quick. All right, so make up a solution. Oh, you do it all the time around your house, maybe, all right? Like you get out a cup or whatever. And then uh, to make up a solution, you mix two things together. Now, um, for our example, and this is actually pretty common, when we think of a solution, we usually think about like having water and then dissolving something into the water. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some water and pour it in my cup. And then I'm gonna put in here, um, some, uh, oh, I don't know, let's do some salt. So we can mix in here some salt. All right, so if I was to do that, add a little salt. Oh, there we go. Maybe I wanna rinse out my mouth. Maybe I got gotta clean my teeth or whatever, a little salt water, my gums or whatever. Well, we just made up a solution. So it's just salt and water put together. You stir it up. Now, is it really a solution? Well. If you stir it, there shouldn't be layers. It should be the same all the way through. That's homogeneous. Uh, and it's two things put together. So yeah, this is a solution. So um, when we uh, look at those other two words, uh, the solvent and the solute, well, again, I didn't actually measure this, but like, let's say for example, I probably used, I don't know, maybe a hundred grams of water. And I didn't use that much salt. Uh, so maybe I put in here maybe five, grams of salt. Well, the thing we have most of, the water, the water would be the solvent in this case. And the thing we have less of, the thing we only use the tiny amount of, the salt, the salt would be the solute. All right. So again, this is going to be pretty typical. Um, not all solutions involve putting something in water, but usually, especially in chemistry, that's what we're going to imagine doing. All right, so um, I do wanna point out to you that not all solutions are exactly like this though. All right, so let's move on and let me show you a, a little bit more about solutions, okay? Let's flip over one more slide here. Okay, so again, for us, mostly we're gonna talk about taking some solid, dissolving in water. That, that was kind of like the example I just did a minute ago, right? A solid dissolved in water. So the thing you have less of, that's the solute, the thing used more of, that's the solvent. But let me point out to you, it's not always just gonna be like a solid in water or a solid in a liquid even. Um, you could mix uh, like, I don't know, two gases together. Two gases together, that would be like, for example, air. You can consider air a solution. 
Most of air is uh, nitrogen. So nitrogen is actually the solvent. Air is about 80% nitrogen. And in that air, there's only actually a little bit of oxygen. Now, thank goodness there is, because we need it to live, right? But air is about 20% oxygen. So the thing you have more of, the nitrogen, that's the solvent. And then the thing you have less of is the oxygen, that's the solute. All right, so it could be two gases mixed together. Uh, it could be a, a gas and a liquid. Like if you open a soda, like a, a Coke or a Pepsi or whatever, uh, that is actually a solution. So the, the solution, the, the Coke, is actually mostly water. Water would be the solvent. And then there's just a few little carbon dioxide bubbles in there. So carbon dioxide would be the solute. Um, so any anything is possible. It could be a gas and a liquid. It could even be two liquids, right? So for example, if you're you know old enough and you, you drink some alcohol. So I don't know, the guy who wrote this book, uh, maybe he's like into hard alcohol. He uses vodka as an example. Vodka is a solution. Actually, vodka, even if it's like, you know, straight out of the bottle vodka, it's still like mostly water. And then it might be like about 40% alcohol. The other 60% is water. All right, so alcohol is a solution. So if people are telling you, you know, alcohol drinking is never the solution, you tell them, no, 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 no. Alcohol is a solution. <laughs> Terrible joke. All right, so, uh, all right, so, oh, it could even be two solids. Two solids, you can mix them together, and that would also be a solution. So uh, they do mention one down here, brass. Brass is copper and zinc. Um, and uh, sometimes when we mix two solids together, you're going to hear the term um, alloys. So an alloy is just a mixture of two solid metals. That's what an alloy is. All right. So uh, with that, that's kind of what these, uh, the, uh, the, all the different kind of possibilities, right? It can be anything with any other thing, really. Long as they mix, the thing you got more of, always your solvent. The thing you have less of, always your solute. All right, with that, uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Let me flip over here again. So I do want to mention again that the most common kind of solution, it's not going to be two liquids mixed that we're going to talk about or two solids mixed that we're going to talk about. We're mostly going to be dealing with something going into water, a solid being dissolved in water. All right, so let's just spend just a couple more minutes talking about what exactly happens when you take some solid, like for example, salt, this is salt here, and you dissolve it in water. So first off, and we've talked about this previously, when you have salt, salt is an ionic compound, and when it gets into water, what's gonna happen is it's gonna separate the sodium ions away from the chloride ions. So, so what water does is it breaks up the positive and negative charges. Now, let me uh, show you a little bit more detail about that. All right, let me flip over one more slide. So when we dissolve any ionic compound in water, this is gonna happen. And uh, really the way that it works is there's gonna be charges and they're gonna always be opposite charges are gonna attract each other. So when you break up salt, and you get those, maybe I should write it one more time here. When you get those positive sodiums, um, they're gonna be attracted to the negative part of water. And that negative part, if you look up electronegativities, that's the oxygen part. So they're gonna get surrounded by the oxygen part of water. There's your sodium. And then we also get negative chlorides. Now the chlorides, they're gonna get surrounded too, but chlorides are negative. So water is going to surround it as well, but it's gonna be the positive part of water, which is the hydrogens. So um, any ionic compound, it dissolves and it breaks up and gives you those ions, both of which will get surrounded by water molecules. Now, I do wanna mention one last fact. When I talked about how you break up something and you get these charged particles, that's true for an ionic compound, an ionic compound. So ionic compounds in water, they make ions. They give you charged particles. Now, that's not true for a molecular compound. So molecular compounds, when they break up, 
So an example of a molecular compound would be something like sugar. It's kind of a big molecular compound. It, it's it's got um, it's got only uh, non-metals in it, so that's why it's molecular, right? Non-metals uh, are molecular compounds only contain non-metals. When it breaks up in water, so it does break up, but it doesn't give you charged particles it gives you particles without a charge. So you don't split it up and get positive things and negative things. And so this leads to a couple more terms that I want you to be familiar with. And those are ionic compounds make ions. And when you have ions in solution, that's called being an electrolyte. All right, so you might have heard of that before, like if you're interested in your diet or you're taking biology before, you need electrolytes in your system for your you know, cells to function and so on. Uh, basically, the way your whole body works, or you make your muscles move at least, is you know little electrical charges flow through you, and that's what makes your muscles bend and sends signals from your brain to your spine and so on to say, hey man, flex your hand or whatever. So uh, electrical charges are carried by electrolytes. Electrolytes are, it's just a solution that contains ions. Now, if you break up and you don't give me charged particles again, you give me uh, neutral particles, that's called being a non-electrolyte. So I kind of showed you this example in the previous page. Uh, salt would be an example of something that makes an electrolyte solution. And sugar is an example of something that doesn't give you ions, it would be called a, a non-electrolyte solution. All right, we're at, that's pretty much all the terminology. So um, let's just wrap up our first video on uh, solutions with a couple of practice questions here. Oh, making sure you know this vocabulary uh, from our first section of our lecture. Let's get to that. All right, our first practice question. Which of the following an example of a solution? Salad dressing, blueberry muffin, wine, or copper. Now, let me give you a little hint. Homogeneous mixture of two or more things. Which of the following is a solution? Um, you're going to have to pick an answer here. Remember, a homogeneous mixture of two or more things. Oh, it's wine. All right, wine. Why? Because first off, it's the only one on this list that's got two things in it and the two things are mixed all the way, right? So first off, well, let's go through the list. Copper is not a mixture. Copper is an element. You ain't a mixture at all. Now, the reason I don't like the first two answers, salad dressing and a blueberry muffin, they are both mixtures, but they're not homogeneous. There's layers. And do you remember what we call it when you have layers? Like in salad dressing, oil and water. That's called a heterogeneous mixture. So the only one where everything's been mixed together is a bottle of wine. And a bottle of wine, I don't know, can I draw a bottle of wine? Not very well. <laughs> and a bottle of wine, there we go. Not, yeah, that's pretty bad. Uh, and a bottle of wine, there's alcohol and water and other stuff, actually. Those are the two main things. And they're all mixed together. It's not like the alcohol's on the top and the water's underneath, right? It's all mixed. All right, so wine is an example of a solution. All right, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Hopefully these terms are making sense. Last question, I think, in this video. All right, what is the solute when you mix 10 grams of salt and you dissolve it in 100 grams of water? Which one is the solute? Oh, it's the thing you use less of. The solute is the thing you have less of, so that means, oh, 10 grams? Yeah, that's less than 100 grams. The solute is gonna be the salt. All right. All right, with that, hopefully that made sense. Uh, we'll move on to part B, and in part B, we're gonna get into some calculations with solutions. So grab your calculator for the next part. You're gonna need it. If this didn't make sense, please let me know. I could try to clarify it with you. Otherwise, we'll move on to part B.